Hello everybody, welcome back to the mini track build, and I'm going to tell you this straight away. I have very limited time today, so we are just going to be um, replacing the uh, speed control. This is the one I went for, so it's the Hobby Wing 80 amp. It does have a U-back, which we're not going to use. Um, 5 volt to 5 amp, the U-back. Oh, the flashy weirdness. Um, so yeah, got this. Shout out to 3DXR in the UK. Um, they were actually... The price of this plus shipping was less than just this on its own at places like Hobby RC. So Hobby RC in places it was £38.99, I think. This was £32 something plus three or four quid for shipping. It worked out cheaper. Um, plans I've had these in have been alright in the past. Um, that's how I sort of went for the Hobby Wing Skywalker stuff. Um, it will do 100 amps burst. Um, but I, unlike, say, Matthew Hogborn, it's in 100 amp because he flies it flat out for the full battery. That's probably not going to be me with this model. Um, so, so it can cool off. Uh, I will probably still do the uh, heat shrink removal. Another reason, of course, I went for this is look how thin it is. You know, if I was try trying to get a red brick 125, it'd be at least double that. But that's nice and flat for this very thin section of fuselage at the back. Um, I didn't check the length, but it... It's actually really about the same. Um, okay, so, first things first, of course, we need to unplug this. Um, the bit that concerns me is removing this for light controller. So, it's held in with Gorilla Tape that can take six kilos of pressure, or six kilos of force, it says. Um, and obviously I don't want to damage the flight controller or the model. Um, so maybe a bit of heat, but again, don't want to damage the model. Let's just get stuff unplugged and see what we can do to actually get this removed. Okay, so I've got everything unplugged, and I'm just using sort of like this metal sort of wedge thing just to try and squeeze under there to try and let this out. Um, because there's no real contact underneath other than when, other than where those go through to right at the end, so I can't lift it before then. So let's uh, hope that works. Okie dokie, so that worked quite well. Stick it in most of it and then give it a twist, that's what she said. So, a couple of jobs to do. We need to peel off all of this old Gorilla Tape and clean it up. I've got some alcohol-based wipes I can use to try and clear that up. And um, we've got, to, of course, solder this in. And I'm going to alter the wire lengths to make it so that it, it, it fits as it should, as opposed to the wires possibly being too long. I'd rather them be actually slightly over long, so they're easier to fold up. Um, or, or the too short and obviously be a nightmare to, to try and sort out. I'm also going to look at, I think, replacing these cables um just because i'm not happy with that bullet connector it just seems a bit loose i could heat shrink it but let's just do it properly all right it's the main power wise let's not lose the model over it the reason why they're here and for example we have this is just so it'll sit nicely under that bar um, because it's so low down if i had these straight out i had to try and sort of flip the wire over the top be a bit of a nightmare or would it? That's the question, actually. Um, would it be better having the wires come out and go up? How, would, how did I have this before? Like that. I've never shot this like that before. So, actually... I'll have to make a new lead-up. But I might try that, actually. Interesting stuff. Um, but I've probably got a knackered ESC somewhere. I can probably take the wire off as well. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So we're going to do some light modifications. Um, let's start by actually firing up a soldering iron, I guess. Okay, dokie. So both soldering irons, this one's clearly on, are on, heating up. I have dissected... Well, I've taken all the bits off of the flight controller and cleaned it up a little bit with the old... Uh, Sucking my bob. Um, taking all the bits off the speed controller. And when I've taken it apart, you can probably see the slight problem uh, with this one. Yeah. So that's what's wrong with that. Um, but we'll keep all the bits. We'll throw that in the bin. So, um, yes, I have also taken this off of the mystery speed controller. Because I think it was literally a mystery branded speed controller. For a battery in. And uh, we'll have this lead on, which we won't use, but it's there if we need to. So you can solder it onto the, the flight controller and uh, figure out what we're doing with this speed controller. Um, we'll get the 
easy bit done first, I think. Okay, so the easy bit is done, and the complicated bit now is trying to work out the SC wiring. That's that's going to be plenty to go over there. So this actually is a bit longer than the one that's knackered up. Um, if we place that there, you can see when that's in place, it is a bit of a tight fit. Um, yeah, we can move it forward a little bit to like there. It's kind of hard to show on the camera, but that will fit. So it can go over this bar a little bit. But what we need to work out is wiring. Um, what I'm half tempted to do is rotate the motor 90 degrees so the motor, uh, so the wires come out here and I can run them up and over this arm. Um, if we do that, sort of how it is now, you can then, as you run the wires across, we can loop them in like that. Um, these wires are really quite high quality bendy wires, so we can bend them into position. Um, um, and it's, it's, it's nice, proper, sort of stuck to the wire rubber as opposed to say on the motors where it feels separate to the wires um so we can get this motor rotated to make sure this wire idea works then we'll see if we need to cut maybe a little bit off of these just to help tidy it up and then um i'm going to cut these wires down i think because these are massively too long to the flight controller and we can do a whole bunch of soldering so i'll see you in a moment right so all soldered up that's the wiring job um if we place that all the way at the front which is sort of the our limiting factor if you like that all the way at the front that placed in there we can have the wires they look sillily long that's hard to say um but they can sort of be bunched up i'm going to tear up and through the holes there so that should be fine so all we've got to do is reassemble the flight controller get everything wired back in stuck down and that'll be it um, and of course when we go in to do the iron have stuff we're going to need to recalibrate um this it's, a it's been apart and b it's been, it will have moved slightly I have tried it with a top on and in order for it to fit this does sort of go a bit like that um so i'm not gonna stick that down um, i'm happy enough that, that gorilla tape is strong enough that it'll hold the flight controller in fine so um let's get that done um let's get the wires out of the way let's get stuff stuck in let's get stuff connected and i'll show you hopefully we'll just go straight to the finished results unless there's a problem which in these videos the last few times there have been um, I should say this at the start, but please, I don't normally say this, but look at the last two videos. They're fairly short. Um, where I started set up I have, and first of all, found out that the receiver was faulty. And then in the second video, carry on with some iNav, and that's when I discovered that that speed control was faulty. And we've obviously seen why. So, uh, yeah, the speed, the speed controllers, the solar irons are off, which is usually a good sign. And, um, yeah, let's get this all wired up and finished while watching Drive to Survive. So, uh, see you in a moment. And hey presto, everything is done. Everything is tie wrapped up nice back here. Um, these wires are kind of just for now. Um, we'll see if they need tie wrapping because they need to not be on top of that. They need to be poked in the side or, or something to keep them out of the way. What I have done, if you look on the inside, is I have sort of chiseled away a bit of the inside. So you don't really see it too much from the outside. Um, and that just pushes up. So if you give me two minutes. Let me just, uh, it is still a very tight fit, this, um, when I put the carbon fibre rods in at the start, <laughs> uh, it did squeeze the canopy sort of gap together a bit and it doesn't make life the easiest. Um, so here we are, so you can see it sort of pushes this up a little bit at the back, you can see the rays, but it does go all the way down, doesn't squish too hard. The battery is all the way at the front and it, it is pushing the top open a little bit which is a little bit of a nightmare again because the motor being so far back the battery's got to be all the way at the front i think we may end up having to add a couple of grams of weight as well because when i do the c of g it's going to be really hard to show you this but it does gently tip back it's not too bad i think 10 or 20 grams would absolutely nail it in make it slightly nose heavy which is always better um for those who don't know, the reason why the motor is so far out, because most people will have it the other way around, so that the bell is in here with the um, shaft sticking out and the, and the collet on the shaft. Um, when it's f further out, it is both faster and more efficient, so that's why we're doing it that way. But again, it is all to do with, excuse me, with balance. I'll see if it needs more than 10 or 20 grams of lead, 
We may have to do some faffing about, but I really don't want to. This little 3D printed thing, which now I've looked at it, may need some slight modifying, is basically a, a uh, canopy latch to go here, like so. Um, it's try to make it super super fit as possible. Well, that will just go over there just to add something to the front. Don't want to do tape because it'll just rip up our laminate. Um, hinges and stuff is a bit of a nightmare because of how far the uh, do you see the run cam four K sticking out. So that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, so this is the solution. Uh, rough it up, glue it on, see what it's like. If I use goop glue or E six thousand, actually to be a little bit, a bit thinner, I should be able to remove it nice and easy. So. Um, I'm going to use tape on the those bits. So, for tonight, that is going to be it. Um, yeah, I am happy with what's happened tonight. Um, so what's next? I'm going to do this piece and generally just sort of go through the box of stuff I've got and, and find all the bits that I still need to fit and scrap stuff and stuff like that that I don't need. Um, go for all the iron have stuff. Put a propeller on it, and um, we're sort of done then, really. Uh, yeah, so I'll bid you adieu. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, this was a little bit longer than I expected, and there's some more useful stuff in here. Um, subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, dislike if you disliked, and make me very sad, but good for the YouTube algorithm. Um, if you have any questions, feedback, comments, anything like that, there's the comment section specifically for that. And I'll see you all in another video. I wants to talk to you. I'll see them. Bye-bye.